start. Hello, my name is Brandon Taylor, and this is Zhao Chen. And what we're working on uh, is trying to classify events that are detected by the ISIS array uh, passive radar data. Um, so that's a picture of the Millstone Hill radar dish where we were getting this data from. Um, the basic idea of this data is that uh, the passive radars are able to take advantage of existing broadcast signals, so like commercial radio stations, and they're able to receive this data and by correlating it uh, against data received from the same radio station at another um, site, they can get um, detect events that are going on in the atmosphere. Um, the advantage of passive radar over reactive radar is that without generating the signal themselves, they're able to basically run these recorders uh, for much more extended time because they're not paying for the broadcast signal, and so they can collect data for basically any time they want. Um, the result of this is that they've been running these uh, various samples of this data since 2004 at seven different stations, each station containing multiple receivers that can be correlated against each other. And what you result when you process this data is basically an image uh, that looks like this that gives you a range that's basically dependent upon the two um, stations that are being correlated against each other and Doppler shifting uh, of the signal. This is kind of a sample when nothing's going on. Uh, so if there's not any geomagnetic storms and there's not any meteors up in the sky, you really won't see anything. So the signals just travel out in space. However, when there are events, you can see geomagnetic storm events or meteors when they come within range. Uh, there's also kind of negative effects using this process of ground clutter where the signal's bouncing off things. Or sometimes because these are just using um, commercial broadcasts, the signal isn't generated in an ideal way, and so sometimes the signal artifacts can result in messy spectrum like this. Um, and so what we're looking at trying to do is basically look through years of tons of data and signal out when there's events of interest to the scientists. So uh, if we can distinguish between a signal artifact and a meteor, that would be great and helpful for them. Um, so what we were given, uh, we had access to a lot of data but a fairly limited labeled data set, um, which was kind of a, a problematic for us. Uh, the other issue is that these um, processing this data is pretty compute heavy. So they have, um, sometimes if they're only looking at a certain region, say they only want to look at meteor data, they might not process the full spectrum. And so we would get a limited snapshot. Um, we ran into problems earlier when we were trying to compare different data sets uh, from different days that have been processed over different regions. And um, that, that was something we had to deal with. So we were, uh, basically throwing out data that didn't process over a certain range and downsampling our feature space uh, to try to simplify this problem. Uh, another thing that we did to try to simplify it was to simply group all of the events of interest. Uh, since these are relatively infrequent compared to typical data, we considered bad data, meteor data, ionospheric storms, all as just events that are of interest. And then if we can at least reduce the spectrum from all of these years of data to a potentially interesting set, it reduces the burden on the scientists. Um, so we kind of broke the set event and no event into two, two sets. One was using our limited labels data set of known events like meteors and things, and the other was using storm events, um, which can be determined from other sensors fairly easily and are pretty widely studied. Um, we ran these through uh, a variety of classifiers um, and just kind of move along and give the example, or the Results here, uh, with cross-fold, five-fold cross-validation, we were able to distinguish these kind of events and non-events, um, which is basically any type of interesting event or bad data. Um, fairly well, we felt like, over our set. Um, one thing of note here is that false negatives are likely more co costly here, as we're just trying to reduce a large data set. Um, the storm, no storm, we got 100% accuracy, which may sound great, but it's probably not that great because storm events are actually very easily detectable from other means anyway, so it's kind of a less useful thing. Um, but we're hopeful that we can kind of narrow down onto like what the range data and kind of more uh, pick out specific features. Um, and then the another approach, because we weren't able to get a further expanded uh, labeled data set that we were hoping to, we began to look at days where we have multiple frequency signals um, at the same sites, so what we're looking at is 
cotemporal data um, over different uh, broadcast signals. And what you'll see sometimes is this is an event where there's a geomagnetic storm that you can see here and here in two of the signals, and this one has bad data. And by using ICA, we were able to separate out the features. And that's one, one thing we're hoping to expand upon. But yeah, that is.